go to a Hollywood production. How many would rather be that even? Let's give our workers a great hand. Thank you so much for our workers. Thank you so much. They spent a lot of time, a lot of hours, and I had to quit a long time ago seeing the first productions, these first starts with these guys. Amazing how good they are. They get their talents from their moms and dads. You reckon? Think so? Amen. But wow. Oh, Merry Christmas to you. Amen. Merry Christmas to you. I was thinking about as I was watching and enjoying the young people and their presentations, and I was watching them laugh and enjoy some of it, you know, just, to, just fun to watch them enjoy it. And uh, some places they kind of, the boys somehow miss stuff a lot more than the girls. Have you noticed that? Hey, man, uh, I think the boys are as smart as the girls. They just don't always show it right away, right? You think so? I'm not so sure. But, but I, was, I was watching and enjoying and I was thinking, you know, about our lives and how that the Lord really wants us in, in our journey of our lives to really enjoy him. I take us for just a minute to the Word of God and uh, go to the Gospel of John. John had grown quite old now in his life. He was known as a beloved disciple. He laid at one time his head on the shoulder on the side of the Savior at the supper, and uh, he uh, talked about his relationship with the Lord when he was there physically in the earth. And uh, he, he referred to himself as a beloved disciple. But he's called on by God by inspiration to tell the story of the biography of the Lord Jesus. Now think about that. Now John had inspiration where sometimes we don't have it directly. We can be illuminated, but he had special, no doubt, inspiration from God, and he tells the story. And it's interesting that he used the culture of that day to tell the story. The Hebrew people were very strong in regarding a word of a man. If you shook the hand of somebody and you told them something, you could count on that. And we got that as it goes all the way back to the Hebrew people. Remember the story of Esau and Jacob, two brothers, and they were to give, one of them was to get the blessing of the birthright. Remember Jacob kind of tricked it, not kind of, he just tricked his brother real big time, you know, put the fur on his hands and on the sides of his face, and he tricked his brother. And Esau came in with the deer that he had, he went out and he harvested and brought his daddy, loved it, and he pronounced the blessing, if you please, already on Jacob. It was a, the blessing of the first strike. Remember the story. Now, you've got to understand the culture and the mindset of the, the Hebrew people. And so he comes back to his dad and realizes now that his brothers tricked in him, tricked him, and he said, Father, hey, Dad, don't you have another blessing? Can't you change what you did to my baby brother? Uh, he got the birthright. It was supposed to be to me. You made the prayer. You gave the blessing. It, what you're supposed to give it to me, uh, it's supposed to be mine. It's not supposed to be on my brother's. But, you know, it's interesting that the word of that father was not changed. You know that? The blessing that he gave to the son that tricked him, that lied to his father, it could not be changed because, if you understand with me, the mindset, the mindset of the Hebrew people. With that in place, we find ourselves in the gospel according to John and, and chapter 1, and we find this read, and it's very interesting, as John tells a story now about the biography of the Lord Jesus. And he said these words, you remember them? In the beginning was the what, church? Word. It's interesting that he uses the word word. He said, okay, now, you want to know who Jesus is. You want to understand him at Christmas. You want to know who really he is? He said he's the word. And the creation story, the Bible doesn't say, my friend, that God made repeatedly the sun and the moon. and the, He didn't say that. But it said that the Lord what? The Lord spake and there was light. The Lord spake, and there was a sun and a moon. The Lord spake, and the waters divided. The Lord spoke. It's an interesting word. That word the word is a powerful word. So now it's interesting, John said, okay, I'm going to tell you who he is. And to the Hebrew people, he's saying, I want you to know that he's powerful. He's all powerful. We're not going to compromise our word, nor will we compromise him. The word is logos, L-O-G-O-S, the Hebrew, the Greek word. And he said, in the beginning was the word. He said, as you go back to the dawning of the first eternal morn, wherever that was, he said, the Lord was, he, the word was there. He said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. He said, the word was with God. It was there beside God. You're trying to understand him, Greeks and Hebrew people. You're trying to understand who this one, the coming, the Savior is. He's, he's the powerful one. He's the powerful one. 
He's a spoken one. He's the one that has all power. He was with God, and then he said that he is God. He was in the beginning. He was with God, and he is God. He was not only there. He was not only beside the Trinity, but my friend, he was as well, my friend, he was God there. And he said, the one that came, if you're going to understand him at Christmas, you're going to have to understand that he is the word. Now, to the Jew people, that word logos is different, and it has a different understanding. And that understanding, my friend, is, a, is it has to, everything to do with a pattern, with a, what do I say, a, a, a path, a formula. When they would see an a, 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 a artist picture, they know there would be an artist. When they would see a building, they know there was an architect. And when they see the creator, the universe created, they knew that he was that one that put it all together. He said, okay, now, Hebrews, I told you, you understand the power of, this, of the word, but now understand the Greek people. He said, I'm going to use the same word, but he used the word logos. He said, he's the one that puts it all together. He said, when the tide raises and it lowers, Jesus was there. When the sun comes up in the morning and the sun set, Jesus is there. The one that's going to come is the one, my friend, that's all powerful. He's the one, my friend, that keeps everything in its order, keeps everything in its place. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Bible said, for without him was not anything made that was made. He said, all that we know and all that we enjoy is because of the Word. The one, my friend, that's going to come and, and lay as a little simple picture of our baby, um, lay a pile of baked bushes and put a little cloth on it and lay a little mimic of a little baby boy, my friend, that one, my friend, is the one, my friend, that made all things. For without him was not anything made that was made. He is the creator of all things. The Bible said, and he is the light unto men. And he's a light to all men. That's very interesting in verse number nine. That he is a light, my friend, that lights every man, that reaches, my friend, the darkest corners of the world. He is that one. And so what's John tries to, in these verses, my friend, put things together. It's amazing how he gives us a picture of who Jesus is. And then he says something that is really neat, and I just take a moment that I might quote it right and use the words correctly. And this word, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We celebrate Christmas but it was the word, the Hebrew powerful one. It was a Greek, my friend, the ordered one. This word, my friend, he became flesh. He was not flesh, he became flesh. Jesus didn't come in, into existence when he was born. My friend, he was in existence in eternity past, but my friend, he became flesh, my friend, for you and I on purpose. Can you imagine changing your form to a simple form, maybe of a little rat or a mouse or an ant or a cricket. The creator of the world, my friend, transcended, my friend, his eternal glory, though we behold it with our eyes and our heart. He became, my friend, he became flesh. He said, you want to know who God is? It says this in these words, and no man had seen God at any time, only the, the only begotten son, which is the bosom of the father, he has declared him. He said, if you want to know who the father is and you look at the son, he said, the son has declared who he is. He said, as you think about Christmas, John said, I want you to understand, my friend, who he is. It goes farther and tells his story. I read in verse number 10, he was in the world and the world knew him not. That's interesting. He came. Foster parent was a young carpenter, young man. Think about it. What a character that Joseph had. Think about that. Think about that. I'm amazed at the character of Mary and Joseph. I'm amazed at their character, just amazed at it. I'm caught in wonder of it. It's interesting, my friend, that here we find, my friend, he is before us. He was in the world, and the world knew him not. And then it said he came unto his own, and his own received him not. It's interesting. He was amongst the world, and they didn't recognize who he was. He come to his own Jew people, the the lineage of David, and they didn't recognize. They had no idea who he was. And then he says this. This is, this is a neat because these verses now come to me and you. And then it says this in verse 12, that he came unto his own, his own received him not, but as many as received him. Now that's it. That's me and that's you. 
but as many as received him, to them gave you the power to become the sons of God. You know, he become the savior of the world. Just a couple months ago, we had a tragedy happen in one of our families in the distant family of theirs. There was a young man that was a Marine, and he had held a lot of records for holding his breath. And so he went to the pool with his friend, and he was practicing, and held his breath too long. He'd become unconscious. When his friend woke up, my friend, he had already gone. He had already passed out. Another story I just heard this last week, very interesting story. A man is preparing to go into the service. So they said in order to get ready for the boot camp is what you need to do. You put on your fatigues and your boots and you swim laps around the pool. All of a sudden they looked up and didn't see him. The waters were flat and still. They found that he was at the bottom of the pool. He had, he had he'd passed out and he'd, he was laying lifeless at the bottom of the pool. But there was a friend of his there that was a swimmer and seen his condition, and he went to save him. Amen. He didn't come to the edge of the pool and said, now, if you can get up here a little bit farther, I can reach you and I can help you. No, no. He didn't say, I'm going to the bookstore. I'm going to buy you a book on better helps and how to become a better person. He didn't say that. You see what he did? He dove, my friend, into the bottom of the pool, and with his strength, the strength of a friend, the strength of a man, he lifted him up, and the man survived. Can I say that you and I must understand and realize that the Savior he, he, he comes, my friend, he became flesh for you and I, and he saves our soul. Amen. He came to who you and I were. God cannot die for God. He had to become man. Man has to die for man. He died for you, and he died for me. I think we must be very careful because of our ears hearing it so much and so often. And the kids do a remarkable, amazing job. The stories and the way they fashion it and our work, amazing. But we got to be very careful that we don't pass by the fact that, that, my friend, there is an eternal plan that God has, and his plan is, but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to those that believe on his name. Do you have that time? Do you have that place? I'm 19 now. My next sister down is 17. My next sister down is 15, and they kind of stayed pretty stair-steppy for about six years, and then there's a little gap there, and we got a couple strays, little brothers and sisters, you know. Mom had passed a year before. My sister's crying. Dad called her Kath. He said, Kath, why are you crying? We're opening our gifts. I said, why are you crying, Kat? Why are you crying? And she said, Dad, this is a first Christmas in all of my life that I can remember that you haven't been drunk, Daddy. First year ever. That's what Jesus did for our family. That's what he did at Christmas. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. There's not a soul that he doesn't see. There's not a soul that he doesn't love. And there's not a soul that he cannot change. He can take an empty-hearted teenage guy, that be me, with a big giant hole in his heart, something missing, my salvation, and save me and save my mom, save dad, and make a difference in eternity for all of us. Amen. That's what Christmas is all about. We can't have a great Christmas, can we? Because Jesus come. Because he come. He makes every dark day a better day. Every difficult task, a possible task, a hopeless situation. He gives us hope. He gives it to me and he gives it to you. And we're not made to walk our lives by ourselves. We're made to walk it with the Lord. Amen. So rather you have a giant pile of gifts at your house this year, or you have a small, maybe the smallest you've ever had. Maybe it might not be the most prosperous. Might be It might be, or perhaps it might be one of the leaner, it doesn't make a difference. What makes the difference, my friend, the good news is that Jesus came and he gives hope to every one of us, doesn't he? I want to stand, ask you to stand with us, please. Would you stand? So tell me about you. What have you done with the word? 
What have you done with the powerful one? What have you done with the one that holds the universe in his hands? What have you done? What have you done with them? What have you done with your sin, mom and dad, grandma and grandpa? What have you done? Well, you say, Pastor, everything is fine. Yeah, it's going to be fine because of God's grace right now. It's going to be, it's going to be fine because in the morning, because he loves you, he's going to allow the sun to come up. And he'll allow it set tomorrow night because he loves you. And he extends his nail-pierced hands out to you and I because he loves you. Say, I sat beside somebody, I stand beside, I live with somebody, I sleep in the same bed with somebody that's saved, and I'm not, and there's no difference. Say this word with me, won't you? Say the word, yet. Would you say it with me? Would you say it? Yet. You say there's no difference. The key is, my friend, the word yet. Because, my friend, the one that came, you say, but pastor, I'm a big man, and I don't need the crutch of being a Christian. It's not being the crutch. It's not getting the crutch. It's getting the cross. That's what we need, the cross. 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 Because big, hard, strong men, we want you with us. We want you there. My grandfather on dad's side is almost six foot tall. Grandma's on mom's side, no doubt Grant Shoup was saved. Grandpa Lamb on the other side, I pray he's there when I get home. And gentlemen, we want you there. Ladies, we want you there. We want you there. Maybe tonight you need to give the Lord your heart. Our church families, man, they're quite a crowd of people. They're, they're quite a, it's amazing who we are. But right now we've got some real things we're praying about really big. We've got some names. We've got some people we're really praying for. I mean, as big as we can pray. I mean, big prayers, you know. As we said this morning, I say it tonight to remind you, we've left the altar open without saying a lot about it for our people that need, need us to carry them through and pray them through. You know, sometimes we need to pray as if it was our wife or our daughter or our mom. You say, Pastor, but I can pray just stand. I know you can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Surely, and God hears every word you pray. Yeah. You could say hi to me from way in the back. Trav's sitting pretty far in the back. And he'd say, hey, pastor. And I could say, hey, Trav. But you know what we'll do? We'll, we'll walk by each other and we'll stick out each other's hand and say, hi, Trav. How's my bro? Because we want to be close. And sometimes we just need to talk to God. And so this is not our altar. It belongs to the Lord. It's a place we set aside to meet with him. Maybe at Christmas you ought to meet with him. Maybe your knees have never bent. Maybe you've never kneeled. Maybe you've never, ever left something behind. Maybe you never. Maybe you never prayed for another person as if they were your, your loved one. Maybe you've never done that. Maybe you never have. Maybe it needs to be the first. Maybe it needs to be the first time. You know, we've had people saved this morning. There was two men talked to me after the service about their souls. After everything was done, everything we were on our way out, Maybe tonight you stand here and you say, Pastor, my soul, me, needs my soul. Give the Lord your heart. Give the Lord your life. Help us carry our people. There's churches that have church prayers. In other words, we got, we got times in our church when it's church prayers, it's not family prayers, it's church prayers. It's all of us, all of our hearts. Church prayers. So you say, yes, Lord, I'm not going to be labor. I won't be long. But you say, yes, Brother Matt's here. I'm here. I'm waiting to greet you. We'll take God's word and show you. It's like someone showed us. Say yes to the Lord. We sing a song. Hide back there in the bush, Brother Tim. Sing for us, Brother Come to the Lord.
bless all the dear children in thy tender care. And we live to heaven to live with thee there. Listen, things will happen, but if prayer can change anything, or everything, then we ought to be a part of that prayer, amen? We ought to be we ought to be the ones that are changing, amen, that are making those prayers that make the difference, amen? Amen, amen, amen. amen. And we've got that great privilege of doing that. Now, if you uh, have the Lord at work in your heart, then don't you leave tonight without Pastor Matt seeing me, seeing Austin. Hey, we need to talk this week. I need to talk. Talk about my soul. You're a lady. We got ladies that love to talk with you. Work you through, just like someone took time to work us through. Amen. And be sure and uh, don't leave without, without making that decision. Wasn't our kids good? Amen. Amen. Man, I look at you and look at them and I say, they can't be your kids. They just can't be, man. They just, <laughs> they just got it together, man. We got great talent. The thing is, you know, Next, next time we see them, they'll be in high school, and the next time we'll, they'll be our pastors and our missionaries, and uh, they'll be our deacons, and they'll be taking the offerings, and they'll be playing our instruments, and they'll be serving the Lord with us. Amen. So thank God. Thank God for his goodness. Brother Matt, come ahead and give us our, uh, our words for tonight. Amen. Mike? Oh, all right. Uh, just a couple of reminders as you go. Two things. Um, don't forget to check in the back as you leave. Uh, for those of you who want to uh, get the uh, church app on your phone, you need some help with that. There's instructions. Be some uh, people there to assist you with that. We just uh, announced that this morning, but we'd like you to get that on your phone so you can communicate. Uh, give us prayer requests. Give us a lot of different things through that. We can give you a lot of updates uh, through the app. So get that on your phone. And then also, those of you who are helping us, um, all of us are praying together for the Go Beyond Missions trip coming up this summer in July. If you could help us with some calendars, if you normally use those, or maybe you don't, but you want to just do it this year to be a help with that, we'd ask you to help us in that way. And then also Christmas Eve um, is just one week uh, from this Tuesday, so don't forget about all of that coming up. Christmas Eve service here at 8 o'clock, and uh, we'd love to have you with us. Thank you for being here tonight. We'll have a word of prayer. And uh, Brother Jeff Silver, will you come up? I want to stand beside you. I want you to make our prayer tonight. Would you please? Thank you, brother. Let's pray. Dear God, we come to you tonight, Lord. We're just thankful uh, for the message we heard and uh, the play that the children did. We just thank, we thank the Lord for your love. We pray you be with us now. Uh, this time, Lord, we're just thankful for your son, Jesus Christ, that died for our sins, Lord, that we could be saved. I pray you would just go with us now. Just uh, I know many of us have... Um, Deep things we're praying for, we're just thankful we can bring them to your throne, Lord, and pray to you. Just go with us now, Lord, be with us. All these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.